Are you playing Call of Dragons right now and a low spender or maybe even a free to play player and you're trying to figure out how to get those treaties because you need those treaties to unlock the T5 research for your account. Well, guess what? I've been doing a little bit of research here and what I've got for you is some nice info on the best ways to actually grind out these treaties every season to actually upgrade that rally beacon and get one step further to your T5. Hello, yes, smash like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos We miss the sneaky and official Call of Dragons content creator. And like I said, today we have treaties on the menu. It's not one I've done actually for really really long time and i don't even actually think i've covered it that much on the channel and basically what you're probably wondering is what a tree is if you're a new player but if you're an experienced player you know exactly what we are talking about so trees is the currency that you get when you basically rally fort so whenever you complete a fort here what you're going to get is a tree that you need um, to upgrade the rally harp and this is for all your rally building for your faction so this is the one for spring wardens that we're going to use for the, today's example but you can see this is a very expensive process. I'm just going to be honest with you. This is 2,000 already on the rally heart that we need to go up. And this keeps increasing per stage, right? So you are going to need to keep grinding. And I've got a lot of information here for you, right? Because you can be spending gems to get this. And I do recommend actually do maybe spending a few gems on your treaties, but not that much. I'm going to say literally try and only use 500 to 1,000 gems maximum. And that's only if you need that, you know, last bit to complete the building. So that's what we're going to um, just give you guys a little heads up. But we have been doing a mass amount of fort killing and i've been trying to see as you can see all these level fives in a row we've been trying to figure out what is the best way of farming forts because obviously it's all about the time it takes as well as obviously the rewards that you're getting right so i'm going to say straight away we did try to do some level fours however just we couldn't get anyone in and i don't have a farm account available just to jump in just to get those but i can tell you already though from the level fives you can see the the amount of treaties you're going to get on average and i did try to rally 10 in a row so if you look and we're going to go up all of these we're going to count the treaties that you're going to get within 10 and you can kind of use that as almost an average per 10 you might be getting plus or minus you know say two or three extra each 10 right so we do get three four five six seven and then we've got um 11 there into uh 14 15 16 no one joined that one 20 and then that was the last one so we actually got 20 within there so you could imagine with a level 4 4 if you're trying to grind them early when they do first unlock to be honest, you're not getting that bad of a return on the trees if that's the thing that you're specifically going for. Because you're gaining, I would say, on average between 8 to, 8 to 18 to 21, 22 of these trees if you look it, if you unlock it, right? Because you can get ones, you can get threes, and you can get some decent fours. So you can get some decent amounts if you, you are lucky. But this is where things start getting turned up because... Obviously, when we start going down, you can see a bit of a mess because we were trying to get, um, but we have some sevens here and sixes to go through. And when we start looking at even the sixes, you're going to see a big, big increase. So if we count 10 of these, we've got uh, f four, five, and then we've got eight. Then we've got nine. Now we've got 12. Now we've got 17. And then we have... 18 again, 19, 20, and now 22. And that was me, I'm going to say, being unlucky. We had 22 there, so we got an extra 2 when we counted 10 down, just like we just did with the level 5s, but we gained 2 extra. So you can see there is going to be a better chance on average every time you're going up a stage of these forts. However, honestly, guys, if you're going to grind 
four treaties, I would honestly only hit sevens. Sevens seem to be the most insane amount for treaties. And we can look at this when we just start going down. So we have one here, which is six already. Then we've got another six, which is 12. Now we've got our first one, 13. We can't get me lucky every time. But then we've got 14 going into 21. And that's already in five or four of these. Now we've got 22. Now we've got 23. Now we've got 24. And then on to finish stuff off, we've got 31 there. And if we, this was the 10th, 36. So you can see the actual growth of the amount of, um, from a level six to a level seven is almost plus 10 or above. And that's just on average, that's that's just not even being, you know, good. You can see we've gained level ones, one still, but on average, you're gonna gain on these level sevens. And you can see on the level six, how more, how many more times you're gonna get, you know, the one treaty for your account. And that is what we are trying to basically not do. So what I would recommend, honestly, in the early game, Ignore forts and focus on your heroes, obviously. So kill your darklings, kill your dark creatures, get those artifact XPs and your hero XP. Just focus that all the way. But if you really, really need to start, you know, pumping out stuff to start upgrading your rally heart to get it going, I would honestly start on level sixes when they start coming out. And once the level six forts are out, you're gonna start pumping those, and then sevens are gonna come out, and as soon as the level seven's out, you will already be joining or you know starting rallies for level sevens because you have to just take advantage of how much more per you know rally you're gaining, even if you don't get that many good rewards. Say on average, if ten people all join and you get small amounts of the you know XP and stuff like that and the resources you're still gonna get a massive amount of those treaties. So that is why it's a very important thing to have right now. So what we're gonna do though, is obviously show some other bits, because the funny thing is, I did obviously show you the, the fort. We've talked about obviously, if you're needing just a little bit extra, you know, on the amount of treaties, you could then spend some gems. And I'm gonna be honest, you will be needing to spend some gems anyway, even if you're trying to be a T5 player or unlock T5 for the first time, just because you gotta remember every building that you are upgrading, and you can see I'm slowly doing it now, um, it costs you 2,000 gems. And the reason why it just costs you 2,000 gems is because of the master blueprint. So just remember that. So even when you do finally, get to 24 and you get all of the treaties for 25. Remember, 2k gems for that master blueprint and that will give you your level 25 rally harp. Why am I mentioning this? Well, the rally harp and the watchtower both need to be completed. And I'm gonna be honest, the watchtower is a lot easier to complete because you honestly kill way more of the patrols all in the early game and mid game compared to the fort. So you honestly do get this quite easily and you can see I've, I'm getting there quite happily and I've not put honestly any gems into my watchtower. And you need both of these buildings though in order to finally basically upgrade the School of Sages to level 25. So it's very important if you are trying to be even unlocking in your research here just one T5 unit, and that's what most of the free to play players kind of aim for, which is a really good strategy. Just aim for the, your one T5 unit, which most likely is gonna be either mages or archers, depending on what you wanna bring to the table. Do you wanna be a single target DPS, -er, or do you wanna be the, the long range, you know, meteor showering rain from destruction guy, right? So you have to pick one of these. So once you've picked one of these and you've done all those requirements, you're gonna be good. But it's not over. I'm going to do one last little secret tip here for treaties um, that can help you out. And you should be doing this. And I know, <laughs> I know I'm going to get moans and groans every single time. But it's scouting, guys. Um, every single season so far, when you do go through all of these villages, and um, that's the main one you want to go through, the villages. The villages have a chance when you are completing these just passively that sometimes, depending on the level or depending on the story or whatever the requirement is, you can potentially get 
a treaty from this. So you can get one or two depending on um, the, you know, the different village. I'm not going to say it's the best thing in the world, but for a free to play player, low spender that's trying to honestly squeeze out as much as they can and grind as much as they can without having to, you know, obviously spend money, then this is the way. I'm just saying you're going to have to do some of this village work which is a little bit of a groundwork and you can see I've not been lucky yet to get one and I've I have done quite a lot in the past and we've done them on live stream where we've been able to get these different um sorts of you know trees but we're getting gems anyway and if you think about it those gems could be used for trees it's up to you um but this is another way this is just to finalize the video so if you guys are looking right now for different types of ways to get treaties these are honestly the best two ways you're going to be able to do it and i'm going to be frankly honest with you and that's that's it you're only going to be able to grind these level seven forts and then the sixes just before and then i won't worry about any of the others unless you're really really adamant um about just focusing up that's fair enough but i would honestly recommend sixes and sevens forts only get them cracked out crack out all of your villagers and by doing that every season and you maintain that discipline i'm telling you guys you will start pushing your rally harp and that's what i'm doing now i'm starting to do the exact same as i said to here in this video i'm practicing as i preach and we're going to be doing all of that to grind up and hopefully not spend eighteen thousand gems on our trees that we need right so that is it that's gonna be the video guys i hope you've enjoyed it a nice little introduction into maybe helping you out as a big spender even a low spender on the ways you can gain trees the best effective methods as well for doing it just remember if you are rallying good little tip always send calves just calves are just superior when it comes to rallying they're just really good at doing it so just just fly those out get them out really quick and back in and you're good to go, right? So hope you've enjoyed the video. Smash the like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos. Be Mr. Steak and a visual Call of Dragons content creator. And I hope you've been enjoying the new content, the way it's been laid out, you know, less stuff and a bit more just easy pop-ups that just go on throughout the videos. And with all that though, stay safe guys, stay sneaky, and thank you for the support and watching today's video.